this presentation looks at the idea of the descendants of the ancient Israelites returning to their original homeland in the Middle East. From the 15th century BC onwards, the 12 tribes of Israel settled in their promised land as described in the book of Joshua chapter 14 to 24. But in the 8th century BC, almost all of the Israelites of all 12 tribes were taken captive into Assyria, leaving only the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The first book of Kings describes this. A century later, the inhabitants of Jerusalem were exiled into Babylon, and some later returned to form the small nation of the Jews, as described in the book of Ezra. But the Romans destroyed this nation in Jerusalem in 70 AD and the Jews were dispersed. The huge number of Israelite tribes in Assyria migrated to the Caucasus region. They lost their Israelite identity and became Gentiles as described in Esdras and in Josephus. These gentilized Israelites in this region were known as Chimerians and Scythians as given to us by Herodotus, Strabo and Seculus. The Chimerian and Scythian tribes were largely ancestors of the Christian nations in Europe and in Asia. The historian Sharon Turner states the Anglo-Saxons, Lowland Scots, Normans, Danes, Norwegians, Swedes, Germans, Dutch, Belgians, Lombards and Franks have all sprung from that great fountain of the human race which we have distinguished by the terms Scythian, German or Gothic. Moses Edry was a 19th century Jewish scholar and he wrote about the ten tribes. The prophet Isaiah, he declares, uh, was stated that the Israelites shall come from the Isles of the Sea. In reality, the ten tribes separated from the rest not only inhabited places very remote from the Holy Land, but are concealed in the extremities of the earth and in provinces peopled by the Gentiles. The Hebrew scholar Dr. Moses Magoliath in his History of the Jews says, it may not be out of place here to state that the Isles of Far Off, as stated in Jeremiah's prophecy, were supposed by the ancients to have been Britain, Scotland and Hibernia or Ireland. The expression, the end of the world, in Isaiah is also supposed to mean Britain, which was a common appellation for the island in remote ages. The Hebrew scholar Yadavidi states, 10 out of the 12 tribes of Israel were exiled and lost their identity. Their descendants are now to be found amongst Western peoples. This is proven from the Bible, Talmud and rabbinical sources, as well as from secular studies in ancient history, archaeology, mythology, linguistics and related fields. The prophet spoke of this. Peoples that emerged from the British Isles, including North America, represent Joseph. The Jews of the state of Israel in the diaspora are Judah. Joseph and Judah are designed to reunite. The tribes will be united in one kingdom. In the British Church newspaper was an article which described how the Jonathan Sachs, chief rabbi of Britain, was asked where were the lost tribes and where did they go and where are they today? He answered the lost tribes of Israel are probably in England. If you know your Hebrew, the name British consists of two Hebrew words, Brith and Ish, which mean covenant man. Historian John Wilson 
studied the migrations of the so-called lost tribes of Israel and wrote them up in his lectures, Our Israelitish Origin. He says we are to look for the descendants of all Israel, not only among the Germans and their Anglo-Saxon offspring, but also in Italy and especially in France and Switzerland. The Goths, some of whom passed northward into Scandinavia, the Ostrogoths who turned southward into sunny Italy, and the Visigoths in Spain. We can find that in his 1876 publication on page 270. So, Jews may well be Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews. The prophet Jeremiah told these Israelite tribes who migrated to form the Gentile nations of Eurasia to mark out the migration routes by setting up stone way marks. We can read that in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 21. But what do we mean by stone way marks? Well, Adam Clark's Bible commentary on Jeremiah 31, 21 describes the way marks as stones or heaps of stones which travellers in the desert set up to ascertain the way. Bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers, reads Jeremiah 16. In those days the house of Judah, the Jews, shall walk with the house of Israel, gentilized Israelites, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Again in the prophet Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 18. For though the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. 
again from the prophet The prophet Ezekiel describes the gentilized Israelites and the Jews as two separate sticks which are to be rejoined together. scholar Dr. Grattan Guinness pointed to 1917 as a critical year for the whole Dr. Aldersmith, who was a 19th century physician and who founded the Medical Officers and Schools Association. But as a Bible scholar, he stated in his 1898 edition of his book, The Fullness of Nations, any day some slight trouble may light up a great European war, which in the end may see the fall of Turkey, Russia extending her power, dominion in the east and Great Britain in possession of Palestine. This period, he says, may end about A.D. 1917. Time only will show. Then the house of Judah. The Jews will walk to the house of Israel, Great Britain to be replaced in Palestine. So, in 1917, we find that the British and Allied forces led by General Allenby did indeed capture the Holy Land came under British rule. In the Daily Telegraph it was recorded that when Allenby was transferred from the Western Front to Egypt in 1917 he was not at all anxious to go. General Sir Bouvard de Lisle saw him at the Grosvenor Hotel before he started. Allenby told him that he was not at all pleased at the prospect. Bouvard reminded him that he had always got his long guns. Allenby replied gloomily they had been sunk. But he reminded him of the prophecy in the States. This was accepted by the Jews but rejected by the Arabs.
so we can say that the, uh, the Jews, or Judah, are back in their original homeland in keeping with the Bible principle, Judah first, as found in the first chapter of Judges. Will the other gentilized tribes follow? Perhaps representatively, as mentioned in Jeremiah 3? Time only will show.